crisp, sharp movement. Precision. The greater the discipline, the greater the success. Soldiering is a part of the nation of Islam, and it readies all of us to obey the commands of God. Now, some will ask, well, why military drill? Because this is what produces the camaraderie. We are one nation, one army, under one commander in chief. So even though we're students, we're soldiers. Even though we're scholars, we're soldiers. Even if we're student ministers or student secretaries, we are soldiers. Everybody in the nation is a soldier. subscription to the digital edition. Bust Doing everything else on that phone. You're on eBay and God knows what. But it is beautiful and it is for you. The final call is the only place you're going to get truth and original analysis of what is going on around you. He's implementing the program, right? What the Muslims want, what the Muslims believe. Number seven of what the Muslims believe. This was, this Muslim program was published by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because white people and Negroes kept asking, How do the Muslims come? What do you, what do you want? Okay. So he published it. Number seven. Okay. We believe this is the time in history for the separation of the so-called Negroes and the so-called white Americans. We believe the black man should be free from the, in name as well as in fact. By this we mean he should be free from the names imposed upon him by his former slave masters. Names which identified him as being the slave master's slave. We believe that if we are free indeed, we should go in our own people's names, the black peoples of the earth. The minister is preparing us for acceptance in the sight of Allah who must back us to win this war. We can't even register in the class wearing the badge that announces we're owned by the white man.
economic withdrawal. First he strikes the enemy. was a hit. You know what that was? That was, what do they call that? Awe. Shock and awe. The Negras are not shopping at Christmas? How are we going to live? And in the coming weeks, I can't do it all today. Oh my God, wait till Let's do it again. Let's keep doing it. What's up next, Valentine's Day? The Battle of Valentine's Day. The Battle of Easter. <laughs> Loving it. We're in phase two. of disengaging You take the liquid assets that you save and invest in your own economic independence. Because the impulsive spending that this Christmas holiday in Santa Claus produces is a byproduct of idolatry. Santa Claus is an idol. And so to uplift him and attribute all goodwill and gifts that you buy your children to him is to take him as a god besides Allah. Now, remember verse 71 of the cattle. Shall we call besides Allah on that which profits us not nor harms us? How does Santa Claus profit us? How does Santa Claus harm us? Shall we be turned back on our heels after Allah has guided us? After 1010 was a perfect day? To go right back and turn on our heels and put a tree up in the living room? The one whom devils cause to follow his low desires in bewilderment in the earth. Christmas is a bewilderment. It's crazy. My memories of childhood, Christmas is, is number one. But when I wipe away the paganism, you know what made Christmas so joyful? My mom and dad. And my sisters and us being a family. See, that's what, a, that's what an enemy does. He makes you think he gave you what you already had. We love the devil because he gives us nothing. <laughs> they made the mistake of asking Prince, my man. They were asking celebrities, what are you gonna do for the holidays? So in New York, they asked this famous person, so they asked Prince, 
Prince, how are you? I, I want to show you the reach of the work of the minister and how many conscious people we have that we may not realize. So they got the prince and they said, so what you gonna do for the holidays, for Christmas? The prince said, I don't even know what a Christmas is. <laughs> he said, it's ridiculous. I don't even understand it. It's just this convention somebody manufactured and everybody's running after it. All praise is due to Allah. <laughs> so the minister said, up with Jesus, down with Santa. The minister uplifted our beloved brother, Dr. Martin Luther King, who called for a boycott back in 1963. Our beloved brother, that warrior, Medgar Evers, who had a successful economic boycott in Jackson, Mississippi, the center of hell. And they assassinated him the next year in his driveway in front of his family. We'll never forget him. Dr. King said, redistribute the pain. But bigger than the hundreds of billions we've been spending until this past season, and that was just a starter. Let's, oh, how could I leave out what a law did? You're still dreaming of a white Christmas, right? Because this show didn't come. Sixty degrees in Chicago. <laughs> Woo! Here's the white people. I can't look at the spirit. Yeah, but then the snow came way later. Now, but bigger than that, than the hundreds of billions of dollars we're going to start recouping is the polytheistic nature of that season that destroys our relationship with the law. So, all right, I'm closing up. Now, praise be to Allah. Let me look at the... You may miss the opening, but you, you get there before they really get there. Uh... <laughs> All right, so the Nation of Islam, and in particular, Minister Farrakhan, we've experienced one success after the other. But we got to take a look at the elephant in the room. So I'm going to say the B word, betrayal. Betrayal's up. It's the season. Poor Judas. You make the wrong choice, and 2,000 years later, Negroes who don't even remember last week are talking about you. In the worst way, right? In fact, your name is synonymous with the trace and trade. I would hate, even though I won't be here, but I hope I lock into Allah's eternal will by complying to his will while I'm here. But I would hate for somebody to say, you turned on me, you're an Ava. <laughs> but that's what he became. You're a Judas. That's me. Now, I'm not going to get into this too deep for two reasons. One, I'm not qualified to go deep. And secondly, if I were, I don't even want to. But it has to be pointed out. Suffice it to say this, that it's not really about what Judas did. It's not even about the money he accepted. It's about what led to this that was rooted in Judas's view of Jesus. 
They taught us in law school, don't get caught up in the specific fact pattern of a case. You know, they taught us law through cases. You know, A shot B and B shot A back and who's, was this intentional murder, uh, is this murder, is it manslaughter, whatever. But they said, don't get caught up in these examples because when you go practice law, you're gonna get different facts. It's not gonna be identical to what was in the book. Learn the principles of law and how to apply those principles to the facts. So it's the same thing with scripture. Don't get so locked into the facts or the example, but learn the principles. And above all, they always taught us, make sure you correctly identify the issue. See, if I go into court and I was becoming known as a very effective trial lawyer, but if I go in court and I represent the man on armed robbery and I prove beyond a doubt he didn't do it, but he's charged with murder. Then I missed the issue. I'm defending him against something he's not charged with. You see? So you have to know the issue. The issue is that which everything turns on, okay? So the biblical accounts tell us Jesus knew. Judas was a traitor. Some of the verses, for example, Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should be slain. And a few verses later, have I not chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil? John said he was speaking of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. I mean, this once I love the book of John because he names names. Yeah, he's always naming. I'll tell you who's there. Menu at the dinner, okay? <laughs> and whereas none of the other Gospels would get into it like that. But he tell you who his daddy is, everybody. Luke reads, then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the 12. Some scholars say Judas had no control over his own actions because he was possessed by the devil and he was used to fulfill prophecy. But Judas, like every human being, had a will. He had power to make a conscious and deliberate decision and act upon it. Just because Jesus was able to see it doesn't mean he caused it or that Allah God caused it. Allah has an active will and a permissive will. He makes things happen and he lets things happen and they ultimately all fulfill his ultimate goal. All of us are susceptible to influence, but there's a difference between prophecy and certainty. Judas, he was greedy. He was fixated on money. Because the big thing, oh, 30 pieces of silver, 30 pieces of silver. But do you think Judas was the only disciple that had issues? According to Christian theology, everybody was messed up. All the people. Because Jesus was sacrificed, according to Christian theology, to save all the people from the sins of the world. Was Peter better than Judas? Yeah, Judas pointed him out to the feds. That's what he got paid to do. Because they weren't even about to try to arrest him among the crowd. Because they would have been mobbed to death. They had to catch him somewhere with just a few people around. And they weren't really sure, the ones that were coming, they weren't really sure what he looked like. So Judas's payment was to identify him for them. And he did it by kissing him on the cheek. That's horrible, but 
then they go to Peter, and Peter's like, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know no Godfather. <laughs> so, I mean, is that better? One points him out, which is horrendous, but my God, here's a man that saved your life, and you talk about, I don't know who I don't know. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Second time. Are you sure you don't know this Jesus? I've never heard of him. Oh, my God. I mean, the Bible don't tell everything, and we have the King James Version. We don't know everything. But my point is, in 2016, we don't know the fact pattern yet. But I'm trying to take the vaccine. And I'm going to talk about the devil's vaccine shortly, but but there's another vaccine from Allah. You know, the way we see a person determines how we respond to that person. Now, some scholars say Judas was probably overjoyed to be selected to be among the 12 because this group of people that Judas came from they had a certain vision of the kingdom of God, and it was very material. Right? But initially, when Jesus started teaching, he didn't really talk about dying and being sacrificed and crucified. What he was doing, he was drawing larger and larger crowds because he was healing people. He was performing what the Christians call miracles. He was casting demons out of people. So in Judas' eyes, man, we're going to, we, this is going to be awesome. You know, he's going to kick the Romans out. We're going to run the country, be wealthy. But the question is that, what is our vision of the kingdom of God? What is our vision of an Islamic world? See? Because when Jesus started talking about his own death, Judas noticed that the references Jesus was making to a new world didn't line up with his own view. So then he started thinking, well, if my view and his view don't match, then maybe he's just false. He began to find fault with everything Jesus was saying and doing. And you remember when Mary used that very expensive oil to soothe his feet at the dinner at their home in Bethany, Judas got so upset he spoke out loud about how upset he was over the cost of that oil. And Jesus rebuked him. Now, the Bible said inside, Judas was incensed over what happened and then being rebuked. And it was then said that he went after to confer with the chief priests and captains how he might betray Jesus. Luke writes, they were glad and they agreed to give him money. Then he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. So money wasn't being drawn, but they paid him and he accepted the money. Once Judas turned, there was nothing. Not even when Jesus had his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, nothing would dissuade him. There is a course entitled Self-Improvement, The Basis for Community Development. It is generally, we always say, oh, the study guys, the study guys. But remember what it's called and read his introductory letter to that course. It is a course for self. See, there are things we engage in that discipline us and prepare us to live in a peaceful society outwardly. But we need an inward transformation. The, the transformation that you are witnessing in the level of power 
being exerted by Minister Farrakhan, what you don't see is the internal transformation that took place in his desire to please his teacher. That's what drove him always and all the way up to today. When he talks about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he has the face of a 13-year-old. Now, that course is not just a self-improvement course, such as you might see with uh, Dr. Phil or somebody. This was a revelation which he developed, he wrote, he gave it not just to the registered Muslims, but the entire black community as a gift. He never asked for a penny, though it is his work. The pedagogy of Farrakhan, pedagogy meaning his method, not just what he says, which is super powerful, and it's tempting to grab the things he says because of their effect on people. But there's more to this. We have to study his methodology. We have to study his way. And we may not agree with his way. His way is trying because of his love for us and for our people. All of us have people we wish would jump off the earth. And there are people that wish we would jump off the earth. And the minister won't let anybody go off the earth. Not yet. If we can accept, which Judas failed to do, if we can accept who he is, because we're faced with a trial of witnessing a human being. And in the human being, you have a blend of humanity and divinity. You have traits that a man shares with you and I. And that makes us say, well, he ain't nobody, he ain't just like everybody else. Um, but if we accept who he is, then we will want to know how he became that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, as we know, that through Minister Farrakhan, he would get all of his people. We should be thinking, as we are now going out, and as the people are coming in, see, we're not, we're not gonna be so much pulling people into a mosque. We're going to transform the black community into an Islamic society where they are. We're coming where you are. We're not going to dance anymore either. And by that I mean we're not going to try to make up words that are palatable to a slave. 